Let's also repeat the word count part of it and see what happens. So we are saying tidy books count words sort equals true. And if you look at this, you find that the number of distinct words, which is the output of this, you'll see that the number of distinct words went down from 14,520 to 13,914. Right? So you had about uh, 1,150 or so stop words and those have been removed. Okay, so it's close to this. Uh, 13,900 to 14,500 is about uh, 600 odd words, right? So Jane Austen had not used all the stop words that were available in the stop words uh, table, but she had used about uh, 600 of them and they've gone from, from this now, right? So now what we have done is we've taken the original text, texts, actually all the books written by Jane Austen, we've taken the originals, we have added the line number to uh, to every line of text. We have added the chapter number to every line of text. Then we broke it into words, right? So now we have all we have is a collection of words, and for every word it, we know which book it comes from, within the book which line the word belongs to, within the book which chapter the word belongs to, right? So now that we have the data in this nice form with uh, one row per token of our analysis which is per unit of analysis, which is word for us. So we've got one row for that. Now we are in a position to do all kinds of analyses very, very easily. So now that we have our data in tidy form, let's start flexing our muscles and doing some analyses. Okay, so the first easy thing to do would be to plot the word counts, which is to produce a bar chart of how the words are used. So we are saying tidy books, count the words, sort equals true, right? So we know this from prior discussions. And of course, we already know that there are about 13,000 some number of words because tidy books now is the filtered version where the stop words have been taken away. We know that that has about 13,000 words, right? So we are not going to be able to look at one bar chart with 13,000 words. So I'm saying filter this by uh, to include only words that have been used at least 600 times. Okay, so now this number 600 has been arrived at by trial and error, right? We want roughly the 10 most used words. I think this gives about 12 or 13 uh, of the most used words, right? So that's what you're seeing here. So we are filtering only those words which have occurred more than 600 times. Of course, we are already sorting the data, right? So now what we have is a data frame with word and count or alternately word, and the second column is called n, right? We know how count works from our prior discussions with the dplyr, okay? So now that we have that, we can now plot it. And of course, what better to plot with than ggplot? So I'm saying ggplot, and of course, since this is piped, so the result of this processing is already an input to ggplot. So ggplot aesthetics are going to be word and n. Right, because we want to do a bar plot with one bar for each of the words that is used more than 600 times. And then we are going to do geom bar. And now by default, what geom bar would do would be to compute, because geom bar is typically used with factors. right? And if you just say geom bar, it's going to go and count how many times each factor occurs. Okay, But we've already done the counting. So we don't want geom bar to do any count. So we are just going to say, well, I'm going to give you what to plot and I'm going to give you the counts. You just plot it. So that is why we are saying geom bar stat equals identity, which means basically plot the word and n as it is. Don't do any further processing on it. Okay. And then I'm going to say quad flip, right? That is whenever you're plotting a bar chart, if you don't do a quad flip, what's going to happen is that the legends on the x-axis will start running into each other, right? After all, on the x-axis are our words, right? And the words can be pretty broad. If you put many words on the x-axis, they'll start overlapping with each other. That won't look good. So when you're having a bar chart, uh, then it's a good idea, especially with uh, a bar chart with something non-numeric occurring on the x-axis, it's a good idea to flip the coordinates. So that is why we have done a cohort flip. The result looks like this. Okay, so 
uh, the maximum number of used words, uh, words used maximum number of times is the word miss. Okay, that has been used over about 17, 1800 times. Yeah, about 1800, 1900 times. Okay, and so on. Okay, so that looks okay, but there are still some aesthetic issues with this chart, right? Typically, when you have a bar chart like this, it's easier to read it if you arrange it in some nice order, either from lowest to highest or highest to lowest. This one is not arranged in any particular order, so that's not very useful. So that's one thing we need to do. We need to order by word count to improve the readability. Also, now incidentally, this is the x-axis label. Although it looks like the y-axis label, that's because we flipped the coordinates, right? So there's no point in saying word. It's pretty obvious that these are all words, okay? There's no need to add this redundant thing. So we can get rid of this x-axis label, right? So we need to make both of these changes to produce a better looking plot, right? The, more, the difficult part of it, or at least something that is new to us, is how to make it change the order. Okay, now by default, you can see what is the order it's going by. It's going by alphabetical order, right? You can see here day, deer, uh, so D, E, uh, etc., and all the way up to T. So it's right now, it's been given a bunch of words to plot, and it's simply going by alphabetical order of the words. Okay, it's simply going by alphabetical order. Now, what we want to tell it is look, don't go by the alphabetical order, instead, order it by the counts. Okay, that requires us to do some slight additional processing that I'll show you how to do right now. So before we can look at uh, how to change the plot to order it in uh, by the occurrence of the word, let's look at some concepts. Okay, so here I'm just creating a vector with some sample words. Okay, so there are, I think, uh, 3 plus 4, 7 plus 4, 11 plus 3, 14 words here, just some random words. And for each word, I've got the counts or some number. And uh, what I want to do is to say that we want the plot ordered by these counts. Okay, not ordered uh, in alphabetical order. Okay, but if I don't do anything and I'm going to create a new table with the word as one column and the count as another column, right? So word equals sample words and count equals nums right so of course ideally we would want them to be ordered by count but let's just see what happens if we plot without ordering by count okay this is just your the data frame as it now looks fox 200 brown 50 fox 200 brown 50 lazy 400 lazy 400 okay so this is just a, a regular dump of this particular data frame let's plot it first okay this is just an extract from that i'm saying df ggplot word count, right? Of course, the column names are word and count, so that's what we are using here, plus geom bar stat equals identity plus coord flip. Okay, so here what you see again is as expected, the words are ordered by uh, ordered alphabetically, right? Baseball, brown, cat, congressman, dog, fox, judge, etc. Completely uh, alphabetically ordered. Right. Now, if we wanted to uh, wanted to order it by the count, then of course cat would occur uh, at the very top, and so on. Okay. Uh, now remember, uh, this is actually the x-axis, right? And we wanted to order by increasing order of count on the x-axis, and when we turn it around, the count will appear up there. The highest count will appear up there. Okay. So now let's see. In order to tell the system not to use its default alphabetical ordering, but to change the ordering, we're going to use a particular function called reorder. That is, we are going to tell the system, take this word, right now it's only a character string, and what reorder does is actually converts it into a factor. Right? And we are saying reorder word, convert it into a factor, and make the factor values depend on the count. Okay, count of course is a column in RDF, right? Once you do this, the factor ordering would be determined by count and not by its basic alphabetic nature, right? 
So if you did that, so this mutate is what is going to cause our plot to start looking different now. And the rest of it is exactly like before. So if you did that, you would then see a plot that looks like this. Okay. Remember, this is the x-axis. And if you had not done a quad flip, then the values would have been plotted from lowest to highest. But you've done a quad flip and it looks like this now. Okay. So this is really what we want to achieve with our Jane Austen books as well. Right. Remember, again, the reason we are coming to this is because we saw this plot uh, We saw this plot and we want to now change the plot so that the bars are in proper order. So that's what we were trying to do and we saw that the function uh, reorder is what is going to help us to achieve that. Okay. So when we did that, it worked well for our small uh, example. Now let's translate this idea to our original problem. So we are saying now tidy books count word sort equals true filter n greater than 600 mutate word this is where we are putting the mutation so that the uh, ordering of the words now changes to be based on n which of course is the result of counting okay and then we do a ggplot just like before and of course we also said that uh, we don't want any x lab so we say x lab null and y lab I just changed it to count of course remember the x lab is actually going to occur on the y axis because we are doing a coord flip and of course the y lab is going to occur on the x axis because we have flipped the coordinates so if you did all that then you see that the words occur that the bar chart looks a little more palatable okay uh, so so this is what is going on of course by la by and large uh, rather by a big margin miss is the word that is used most often followed by the next word time and then so on and so on and so on okay so you can look at the word usage patterns uh, uh, you can analyze word usage patterns of large volumes of text and get a good idea uh, about some of the uh, main focus of the text itself okay or for example suppose you want to uh, compare a piece of writing uh, or let's say somebody submits two pieces of writing and you want to compare and see if both of these were actually written by the same person right then looking at word usage patterns can actually give you a good idea of whether the two things were actually written by the same person or not in fact uh, universities have started using these kinds of techniques uh, to analyze college admissions essays or uh, even plagiarism and so on Okay, so that, that's just another application of how text mining is used. Let's look at some additional sources of large volumes of text. I had earlier mentioned uh, the Gutenberg project by Google to uh, get the full text of many documents and make them available to the world. Uh, so that you can access that by using the Gutenberg R package. So as usual, you'll first have to install the package, Gutenberg R, and then you can load the library Gutenberg R okay and in fact if you Google Gutenberg R or even the Gutenberg project you'll be able to get an idea of the kind of information that this project has so for example suppose we want to download the full text of all the books by H.G. Wells right one of the famous books that H.G. Wells wrote was uh, Time Machine another was 1984 so a lot of good books that H.G. Wells has written so you can do for example H.G. Wells is Gutenberg download C 3536 okay now these are the identification numbers of some of H.G. Wells books now how did we find these identification numbers well if you go to the Gutenberg projects website or if you go to the Gutenberg R project right just google it and then you once you go there you'll be able to uh, poke around and find the ID numbers of books by certain famous authors you'll be able to search for that Right? So that is how we found the numbers of these particular books. So you could do H.G. Wells' is Gutenberg download, see this, then, then of course each of these is the ID of a particular book, you get it. Sometimes I have seen this happening. When you execute this command, uh, even after loading the library, you'll, uh, you might get an error message. Okay? Now that may happen because all of these downloads are going to happen obviously from a website. Right? 
and uh, this information Gutenberg project information is stored in many different uh, websites called as uh, as mirrors uh, mirror sites for this sometimes the mirror from which by default it tries to download it determines the mirror from which to download uh, based on your current location from where you're downloading it's going to look at the closest mirror and try to get it from there it is possible and I have noticed it that sometimes your closest mirror may actually be down the website of the closest mirror may be down and therefore this function of Gutenberg download may fail okay so if that if this command works you're all set no problem but if this fails then you may want to explicitly mention the mirror right so for example if I say mirror equals HTTP colon slash slash Gutenberg uh, pglaft.org okay so if you do that then it will go and try to retrieve it from this particular mirror okay it's unlikely that you will get an error message from this as well as this but if this happens then again you know Google the Gutenberg R project uh, and then find out the names of some of the other mirrors and then try to get it from those mirrors right I'm sure one of these two will succeed so after this uh, you know you can get the HG Wells books data so that is all in this data frame called HG Wells and as before it contains the lines individual lines and we want to break it up into words so we can say unnest tokens word text and of course we know that we don't want the stop words so we can directly get rid of the stop words by doing anti join stop words okay now incidentally the column that contains the lines is also called text in uh, Gutenberg download as well right so we can use some of the same things or of course if you're getting data from some other source and the column is not called text but it's called something else then that's what you would use here okay now of course you're going to break it up into words and uh, you're going to store the result in a column called word which is also recommended because when you join with stop words uh, that also has a column called word so without any extra coding you'll be able to manage it right so I would recommend that you call the word column as word you could call it anything but if you call it word then life will become a little bit easier for you